Hey guys, welcome up to Copper Harbor. We are at Fort Wilkins Historic State Park and we are camping in the camper cabin, also known as the Lake Fanny Ho cabin. We are right on Lake Fanny Ho and it's frozen right now as you would expect it to be in early January in the Keweenaw Peninsula. But I thought I would show you guys what camping in a camper cabin at a state park is kind of like. Not every camper cabin is the same. There's also two main types of cabins that the state parks have. They have mini cabins and camper cabins. Mini cabins are much more frequent. They're just one big room. But the camper cabins are really nice because they're just a little bit bigger and they provide you with just enough extra space to make it very comfortable while you're here. So the Lake Fanny Ho cabin has a really nice deck right here. They provide you with a huge snow shovel in case you get more snow. There's a nice little cart to carry your stuff because you don't park right by the cabin. It's a little bit of a walk. Nice little bench. We've got our firewood here to have a fire and then we'll head on into the cabin. Let's first take our boots off here so I don't track water all around. I appreciate that here they have a very large and quick dry mat. Not every state park has that and most of these camper cabins are available for winter camping. So it's nice to not track all of the snow inside. So at first glance, what we're heading into is the living space. This has a queen size fold out futon with a nice little wooden counter space, some cabinets a mini fridge and a microwave. So these cabins have electricity and heat. We don't have great cell service here at Fort Wilkins State Park, but I've camped at other camper cabins where I have full service. I don't really know if any camper cabins have Wi-Fi, but a lot of state parks still do have great service. Fort Wilkins isn't one of them. I brought my camp stove so that I could do a little bit of cooking while we're here, warm up some water for some instant coffee. The TV is ours that we brought. It's just a little mini TV with a DVD player on the back, essentially like a large portable DVD player. And of course, we only bring the essentials. You'll need to pretty much bring everything with you in terms of kitchen utensils, bedding, things like that. Some state park camper cabins have coffee makers. Fort Wilkins does, but I just brought stuff to make instant coffee because it's easier. And some of them also have hot plates too, but pretty much all of this stuff and food-wise, of course, we brought. They did have some lighter fluid. They had an extra roll of paper towel and some toilet paper. They had a little toaster and someone left some books here, which is really cute. But not every camper cabin has that. Most of them come equipped with microwave, fridge. Some of them just have mini fridges. Some of them have full-size fridges. So if you're thinking of frozen food, don't always depend on that because it might not always have the ability to freeze. Though in the wintertime, you might just be able to leave it outside depending on how cold it is. There are two like bar stool chairs to sit in. We love to bring these collapsible chairs. There's just like not quite enough room on a futon and don't love sitting on a bar seat all the time and these are just so comfy to sit in. So my dad brought his and I brought mine because we only have four of us that are here. So two people can sit on the futon and then two people can have chairs and then we're nice and comfy. The bedrooms don't have doors, they just have like curtains that slide. And I find this to be the same in other camper cabins. Taos Point State Park has the same kind of system where it would just be less space if there was a door to open and close, so they just put curtains in there instead. There is a bunk bed in each room, twin size bunks. Some camper cabins have a queen bed, some have bunk bed, twin beds. So pay attention to what the description says for the camper cabin as well as mini cabins to see what the actual bedding setup is. This is my bed right here. I've got my REI sleeping bag as well as another REI blanket. I brought my own fitted sheet to fit on the twin size bed and my pillow. Like I said, you have to bring all of your own bedding the cabins are pretty darn hot. I would not say that you need to go extra with blankets, though it never hurts to have more than you need. So bring whatever you feel is necessary, but know that just be aware that they tend to run warmer in these cabins than colder. Not all state parks have these cute little mirrors, but I love this, as well as this little like three-tiered shelf and a nice little nightstand that we can throw some of our stuff on. Like I said, all of these cabins have electricity, so we always have to go a little extra with decorating. But who doesn't like Christmas lights? They make everything happier, right? Now, now, heading on out of the first bedroom and into the second bedroom, this is where my dad's sleeping. Fairly similar setup. He has the curtain to close as well as a two twin bunk bed here. He's got his sleeping bag as well as a fitted sheet to go over the bed there. 
We are using the top bunk for storage because my partner Dave is sleeping here on the queen size futon because it's just cozier. So it's nice that we can throw our extra totes and stuff like that up on there so that they are out of the way and not on the floor. Overall, I absolutely love the mini cabins, camper cabins that the state parks have to offer. The camper cabins definitely are my favorite when you're camping with multiple people, more than two I would say. The camper cabin just gives you that extra space that you need, a nice little living space area that everyone can glamorize in. It allows more space for cooking, all that good stuff. This camper cabin, at least for the winter months, runs at $74 a night, so incredibly affordable. Now, you may be thinking, well, it has heat, it has electricity, it looks nice, there's two bedrooms and a kitchen area, a living area, but what about the bathroom? That is the one thing that is different, my friends. So, most state parks do not have their bathrooms open in the winter. They are winterized. So, you have only access to vault toilets. You need to bring in all of your own water most of the time because you don't have any running water as well. We have hand sanitizer for after we leave the vault toilets to use. They do keep the vault toilets very well stocked with toilet paper, so I wouldn't say you need to bring toilet paper, though we always have it in our bags just in case of an emergency. When we camped at McLean State Park last year in a mini cabin, their vault toilets were by far the best I'd ever seen. They have lights on the outside and on the inside at night, solar powered, but still, it never felt dark or scary when we were in there. Here at Fort Wilkins State Park, the vault toilet that's by the Lake Fanny Ho, or the Fanny Ho camper cabin, does not have any lights, but we just bring a lantern in with us and it's fine. But just note that there are no bathrooms for any of the camper or mini cabins at the state parks. However, at Towers Point State Park, that is the only state park that I have found that they keep their modern restrooms open, not winterized for the winter. So when you rent either the mini cabins or the camper cabins at Towers Point State Park, you have access via a keypad to the modern restrooms. I don't know if you can shower, we've never tried because we've only camped for like two nights and we've just dealt with the stank, brought baby wipes, etc. But you do have access to the sinks and the flush toilets, just making it a much nicer experience. If you guys camp at any of the state parks, either in a mini cabin or a camper cabin, let me know below. If you already have, let me know your favorites. And if I haven't been to them, I need to add it to my list. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you have any other questions about camping at a camper cabin or a state park mini cabin, let me know in the comments below. Look on Instagram. I've got more information on there as well. And be sure to check the link in my description of this video because I have a list of all of the state park mini cabins and camper cabins that are available. All right, I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.